Hey Collider fans, this is John Rocco with a special assist from Katie Burt on another Game of Thrones video. This past Sunday's episode of Game of Thrones gave us all some time with each of the characters at Winterfell as they reunite, put away old grudges, and prep for the upcoming battle with the White Walkers. Well, speaking of the White Walkers, before they take out some of our favorite heroes, let's get a quick refresher on these ancient, terrifying, mummy-like antagonists with their ice zombie army. The White Walkers are leaders of an ice zombie horde known as Whites, seemingly intent on destroying the world of men. They come from the far north, deep beyond the wall, and have been organized under the rule of the Night King. The White Walkers were created by the Children of the Forest thousands of years ago as a form of protection against the First Men who were cutting their sacred trees and slaughtering their tribe. Seems like an extreme reaction, but uh, okay. The White Walkers were originally First Men themselves before being captured by the Children of the Forest to be changed into weapons. The Children of the Forest pressed dragonglass daggers into the chests of these First Men to create the first White Walkers. Eventually, the White Walkers rebelled from their lives of forced war making and decided to make war on their own terms, attacking the living indiscriminately and becoming the most feared creatures in all of Westeros. Creatures like uh, tend to rebel when you try to control them, so like, this is not a surprise here, Barry. I mean, have you seen the Blade Runner? As I mentioned earlier, the White Walkers are led by the Night King, the most recognizable of this frozen crew. Although Ice Dragon Viserion and the White Walker dude with the beard is getting to be pretty recognizable to fans as well. The Night King was the first of the White Walkers. He was one of the first men before he was turned into something else by the Children of the Forest. He has the power to turn human infants into White Walkers, as we saw with Castor's sons, who were given as sacrifices to the Night King in return for Castor's and his brood's safety. I mean, little babies, man. Come on! He is responsible for Danny's dragon Viserion being raised from the dead as well and rode him while destroying the wall last season. As I said earlier, I'm sure they're probably pretty mad about that enforced slavery thing. Also, they were created with a singular purpose, war, using untested magic as the instrument. In other words, the children of the forest were just kind of desperately winging it. They were playing with fire, or in this case ice, and most definitely got burnt. Now they're getting everyone else burned too. Okay, that's enough about fire. We'll get to Beric Dondarrion and his fire sword in a minute. Perhaps given their origins, the White Walkers are incapable of wanting anything other than to conquer. Or maybe they're just really angry. Frankly, this is the Children of the Forest's fault. Though it seems like a low blow to harp too much on this point, given that most of them are dead, many at the hands of the White Walkers themselves. Here's a lesson for you scientists. Maybe don't create things that you can't control just because you can. C.A.I. Robots. Anyways, roughly 8,000 years ago, during the longest winter in recorded history, it lasted an entire generation, the White Walkers struck Westeros. It was not good, but eventually, the people of Westeros joined forces, and with the help of the Children of the Forest and the Giants, drove the White Walkers back into the north. The wall was built to keep the zombie horde at bay, and the Night's Watch took their first pledge. Since then, the White Walkers have faded in a fairy tale, and most people in the world of men think they are simply a scary story made up to keep children in check. Although this season, that has definitely changed. So how are the White Walkers just like us? Well, we know they speak a language called Scroth, which author George R. R. Martin describes as sounding like the cracking of ice. There is a White Walker ruling class that usually has crown-like horns of ice and sometimes wears black armor. Melisandre claims the White Walkers worship a god called the Great Other, who is basically the Lord of Light's enemy. Hmm, I wonder if that is going to come into play down the road here. Remember that Melisandre told Varys that she has to return one last time and that she has to die in this strange country. There is a part yet for her to play here and it may have to do with Beric Dondarrion and his flaming sword battling this great other. Told you we'd get to him. Also, remember that Bran revealed that the Night King wants to destroy him because he holds all of the history of man. The Night King has evidently tried to come for other Three-Eyed Ravens for the same reason. But now that he has marked Bran, it seems clear that the White Walkers want to destroy any remaining semblance of the living and their world. There is also a theory on Reddit growing in acceptance that in order to kill the Night King, you'll have to kill Bran as well. The death of the Night King and the Three-Eyed Raven also fits into the death of magic narrative that many people are now starting to embrace as the end result of this season. Season. So what powers, magic or otherwise, do these White Walkers possess? Well, they are super strong and also seem to have some sort of ability to manipulate the weather a la X-Men Storm. Maybe that's why her hair is always so white. They usually appear accompanied by a blizzard and dropping temperatures. White Walkers have the ability to freeze anything they touch, as we saw in Season 2 when a White Walker froze Sam's sword to the shattering point. Perhaps most terrifyingly, the White Walkers are able to reanimate corpses of fallen men or women. Uh, cue the Lady Stoneheart storyline from the books that is yet to be seen on the show. 
and turn them into whites. Wildlings have taken to burning their corpses to prevent them from being added to the White Walkers' increasingly massive army. Uh, that may come into play as well this season. The Night King in particular has demonstrated further power with his aforementioned ability to turn human infants into White Walkers. Again, babies, man. He can turn hundreds of corpses into whites with the raising of his arms, can cause fissures in the ground, and mark a person for pursuit as he did with Brant in Season 6. Oh, and he can also reanimate dead creatures like dragons and giants and bears. Oh my. Okay, the big question. Can the White Walkers be killed? Yeah, but it ain't easy, as Sam discovered in a terrifying way. White Walkers are vulnerable to blades made from dragon glass or Valerian steel. See our previous video on the importance of Valerian steel. Jon Snow uses his Valerian steel sword Longclaw to take out a White Walker at the Battle of Hardholm in Season 5. Unfortunately, the art of forging Valerian steel has been lost, which means there are a limited number of Valerian swords left in the world. But Gendry is trying to make up for that with his abilities to create some damn cool dragon glass weapons. Unlike whites, it is much harder to burn a white walker because they are so cold, though there is speculation that dragon fire might do the trick. The big shortcut we saw in season 7's episode Beyond the Wall was that when a white walker falls, the whites they resurrected lose their mobility mojo. So does this mean if the Night King dies, all the white walkers die with him, or just the ones he resurrected? We shall see soon, perhaps. Final question, are the white walkers going to kill everyone in Westeros? Eh, probably. So I hope you enjoyed the moments you got in A Night of the Seven Kingdoms with the cast, because it just might be the last we get with them. Okay, that's our refresher on the White Walkers, Night King, and everything frozen in between. I hope you enjoyed this video, and you're getting emotionally ready this week to handle what might happen at the hands of our frozen friends. Let us know if we missed anything in the comments section below. Remember to like and share this video on your social media, and to subscribe to the channel for more Game of Thrones videos just like this one.